Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm one of the managers of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 60 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do. And our guest today is a prolific contributor to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and he is uh, the new director of open source with Cisco. And um, I'd like him to introduce him, himself, uh, Stephen, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to our, our audience. Hey, Snackers, I'm Stephen Augustus, uh, head of open source at Cisco and one of the engineering directors in the Emerging Tech and Incubations Department. Uh, outside, of, uh, outside of my day-to-day -day at Cisco, I am a as uh, Matt mentioned, a CNCF contributor, uh, one of the uh, one of the members of various governance bodies across the the CNCF uh, to do group, uh, OpenSSF. Uh, nice to meet you all. Yeah, thanks for being on. Um, so I, I misspoke earlier. I said director of open source, so uh, head of open source at Cisco, which is, um, from what I understand, and I haven't heard of this role before, having been in Cisco so long, um, is is the first you're the first person to kind of hold this title within Cisco. Can you talk about um, you know, that particular role and, and what you're looking to do to, to bring Cisco into the open source world or, um, you know, how, how it plays out for Cisco and for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I definitely want to uh, recognize the contributions that have come before me. Um, we have had open source efforts in the past, um, but this is uh, this is the the newest, latest, hottest one. Um, so <laughs> I am I'm, I'm kind of focused both internally and externally. I think that there are kind of three lenses to look at in terms of uh, contributions. That's kind of the lens of the contributor, the lens of uh, of a maintainer, and then you know the lens of sponsorship. And uh, you know Cisco as a as an organization um, is is kind of focused on all three. Uh, so my job here is to to evangelize open source, uh, not just consumption, but contribution and maintainership uh, across all of Cisco, and partner with uh, and partner with communities on the external side to make sure that we are showing up in the way that we we, we need to. Yeah, I gotta say, for you know, we've been we've, I've been with Cisco for fourteen years now, Matt. You know, yeah. you don't you don't really list here Cisco and 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 translate that to open source. So it's cool. And I know you and I worked a little bit on a couple of open source projects back in the days in DevNet. Uh, Shipped was one of them, and Mantle. And recently, I think you did an episode around API Clarity, which I believe is also open source, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it yeah, is. That is. Um, and that's coming out of the same organization that Steven's coming out of, yeah. Yeah, that was the that was the first one I worked on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm super excited because it's it's always fun to have a demo. And I know uh, Stephen, you have a demo for us today around scorecard. So you know, let's let's get into that and talk about it a little bit, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So um, you know, there's been lots of conversation recently around. Um, how we can do better uh, around security and, and open source security. So if you've heard, if you've heard that you know log4j, if you've heard colors fakers, um, we're we're staring at it. I, I think we as a community, um, both within Cisco as well as uh, you know the larger efforts on the the open SSF side, so Open Software Security Foundation, and um, and the the government really right you know so the the you know we've you know the government has issued an executive order uh about you know the importance of uh software supply chain security so i, I figured it'd be cool to to kind of look at a tool that is um helpful in uh in in managing that for your for your code repositories uh so that tool is called uh scorecard and it is part of the open ssf we've got a cool little logo here um, so scorecard, what does scorecard do? Scorecard runs a variety of checks on projects to make sure uh, the dependencies are safe. So, you know, what do we mean by that? There are a bunch of different checks that you could run and you can find out more details at uh, github.com slash OSSF slash scorecard. But we've got a few different checks here that include, um, you know, do I have binary? Uh, do I have binary checked into my repository? Do I have branch protection configured? Or do I have CI tests? Do I have a badge? You know, so on and so forth. Are we doing code reviews, right? Um, so I'm going to jump right into it and, you know, pop up in the terminal and let's see, you know, so I've got scorecard, uh, I've got scorecard installed, um, which, 
you know, we have installation instructions and it's a going project. So you can, you can easily do a, uh, you know, go install github.com slash OSSF slash scorecard at latest, and that'll give you the scorecard. Um, but we also have scorecard available via homebrew. Um, so if you've got homebrew on your computers, it's pretty easy to uh, get that installed. And we're going to ignore the fact that um, my command line utilities need updating. Um, <laughs> but let's look at how you could run scorecard. I'll do it from the scorecard action directory, which is a, a bit of foreshadowing for the rest of the rest of the demo. Right. If I go into my history, I can see that, you know, I've, I've got this great command. Um, so first, I'm just going to quickly show you that the, the help for scorecard, um, what you can do with the tool. You can specify those checks that I mentioned previously. Um, you can specify a commit to run it against the format um, and various other doodads. If you want to check a repo based on an NPM package, you can do that, PyPy, Ruby gems. Um, and then you can also show additional details about each of the checks. Um, so I'm going to run this against uh, a repo that is near and dear to my heart, uh, the Kubernetes release engineering repo. So while that's running, I'll, I'll make a comment. We've been talking about, um, you know, the concept of shift left and, and in the focus of security, the conversation comes up, hey, how do I actually check my code uh, for these dependencies? How do I check my projects to make sure that it's uh, what someone would consider secure? And this is totally a practical and tactical uh, way that people can do this today is, you know, run this, run this against your, your repository to make sure that, that um, you know, commonly known security uh, challenges uh, can be checked and, and addressed within your project. That's that's awesome. So I, you know, I I think it's really cool, and that's part of the reason I started getting involved in uh, in Scorecard. Um, and then I became a maintainer, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it is <laughs> yeah, that awesome. easy. Um, <laughs> it is that easy. Sometimes you just have to ask the question. And and Stephen, I'm I'm assuming there is uh, there's a GitHub action that we can apply to our repo to basically um, force this these commands to run upon pull request or um, pull or um, uh, push for a new code. Absolutely. Um, so piping it through JQ just got some 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 well formed JSON, and I'm gonna copy this so I have it for my own reference later. Um, but we can see if we kind of run through, I'll get rid of the directory structure. Um, it gives you it gives you some details about the um, about the repository. You've got the date, the name, commit, um, scorecard version. I mean, this is because I, I did the brew install and it's not piping some of the version info. But you can see that this repo has a score of eight point five um, out of ten, and uh, and each of the checks have you know e e each of these heuristics kind of have like a, a score. Um, a score associated with them and then you know that this top level score is kind of an aggregate of each of these right um so it's telling me a few things um about you know is branch protection configured do i have ci tests right and it said you know out of the last 30 merged prs there there was a ci test that ran against it right um it doesn't have a badge yet which is something that i'm going to go fix um are we doing code reviews yes 24 out of the last 30 commits were code reviewed, um, and really that is based on the age of um, the how long Scorecard has been running in the repo, right? Um, but you can see all these kinds of cool things like who is you know who is contributing even, right? Um, so it's 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 noticed that like we've got folks from WeaveWorks and you know Microsoft and uh, you know and IBM and Google Cloud Platform, all these various these contributors um, for the repo because. The, the contribution state and, and who's contributing to it is is an important uh, you know is an important measure of of how something is being maintained and if it's being maintained well. So let's uh, you know without further ado, let's take a look at the, the the GitHub action, making it as easy as possible to get this this work done. Um, we have a scorecard action, and the scorecard action uh, essentially wraps the uh, the command line tool and uh, provide some results to GitHub, which you can use in, uh, in code scanning. So if you are, if you're, if you're on GitHub and you're familiar with like the security tab, you'll see that, um, you know, there's a code scanning uh, setting there that you can configure. Um, so this is a PR where I configured both code, code QL code scanning, as well as the scorecard action. Um, and these, uh, 
when you go to configure these, it's really, really simple um, because like these configs that I merged are effectively the, the default configs, right? Modulo a few, few differences for the repo. Um, so, you know, I'm going to check out the code. I'm going to run the analysis based on the scorecard action. And you should be uh, pinning your actions by digest, not by tag. Um, another security tip. Um, and then finally, we're going to upload, you know, upload that to code scanning, right? So we're uploading the artifacts. We're uploading it to code scanning. Now, let's see what that looks like in practice. If I hit the security tab, and I go to the code scanning alerts within this repository. Um, these are all, you know, th these are all things that um, you can scan yourself. So I'm not super concerned about exposing surprising information uh, on a recorded call. Um, but for example, let's talk about that. Uh, you know, so we had pinned dependencies, right? And it's telling me that a bunch of these dependencies are not pinned by hash. So remember, I just mentioned you should you should be pinning your stuff by by hash, ideally, right? Um, so it's it's telling you exactly what is not pinned, um, and then you can kind of go in. Those are referenced within the code scanning alerts. And we've got these you know, we've got these nice little cool uh, tool tips within GitHub that says like, hey, this isn't pinned. You know, and let's you know, let's look at an example that is more maybe more um, more relevant uh, for folks like using Docker files, for example, right? So this Docker file is saying from Debian some OS code name, but the the image is not actually pinned by by hash, right? So that could be an interesting fix because it is using an environment variable, um, but you know, something that let's look at the uh, pin dependencies for like the GitHub actions, right? So within the workflows and scorecard probably has a, you know, the each of these properly configured, we can see, you know, this is pinned. And we've also left a, a note about what version it's using. Um, but let's look at the code QL one. And maybe we're going to find that something isn't pinned. Actually, they're all pinned. So that so that issue may not not be an issue anymore, right? Um, but you get a bunch of, you get a bunch of cool stuff here, um, around like, Hey, are you doing fuzzing on your repo? Right. And I can, and then I can click into the remediation details and it's going to tell you like, Hey, here's how, here's how you could potentially set up fuzzing for your repository. Right. Are you doing uh, static analysis for your code? If not, here are some ways that you could fix that. So Steven, I have a question for you. As as you're going through, you know, these issues, one thing that comes to mind, and um, I'm not sure if this is even possible of part of part of scorecard, but could I set like a list of issues that I, you know, as soon as they're detected, um, scorecard can essentially or the, the tool itself can go essentially fix it for me since it knows where the issues are and how to fix it. So I think that um, I think that fixing, you know, automatic remediation is a little is a little trickier to to reason about. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, so let's look at some open pull requests. And, you know, for example, let's take this. Um, right. So it wants to change. So this is a as a dependabot, but dependabots something else you can 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 and should configure on your repos if you're using public GitHub. Um, it's a config that can automatically um, do updates to um, do updates to your dependencies, right? So in that in that pull request that that I that I had for uh, configuring code QL and scorecard, you'll also see that I added a config for dependabot. So, so I was adding a GitHub action. I wanted to make sure that it's going to look over the GitHub action and try to update it, right? So it's everything that's within the root, and I'll try to update it on a daily schedule, and it'll label it in certain ways and make sure that certain pull requests, uh, uh, there's a limit to the pull requests. So you know, for some of the actions, um, so for some of these dependabot updates, you may see that uh, if we're changing a version in you know, so Dependabot will automatically handle this version update, right? And it'll update it by SHA if you're if you're doing it by SHA. Um, but note for this actions actions setup go, which is which is pinned by which is pinned by SHA as well. But we've also left this comment for 
for uh, version 2.1.5, right? It's very possible. What Dependabot does not do today is uh, update this comment, right? So it's very possible mm -hmm. that we would have a comment. We would have a comment that references a version that is not the version that the that the digest is for, right? Um, so I say all of that to say, like, is it important to is it important to do automatic re uh, remediation wherever possible? Yes. Is there a possibility that you're going to run into situations where the tool that you're using is maybe does does maybe doesn't have the logic to understand how to update all of the relevant places? Yes, that's a high probability. Um, anything that you turn on that is automated, you should try your best to understand it uh, before you automate Makes it. Makes sense. Yeah, very cool. Um, Stephen, I'm really sorry to have to do this because I think I could talk about this all day long and twice on Sunday. But um, we are unfortunately out of time. But before we let you go, we ask every one of our uh, new guests this question. Um, what superpower would you choose to have and why? So I've always really liked the um, uh, really liked telekinesis and, and telepathy. Um, so I'd probably go with one of those. I love that one. That, that's a good one. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for uh, you know talking about open source efforts within Cisco, showing us this um, awesome tool scorecard, uh, giving us a little insight into uh, what we can do with uh, tooling our repos for GitHub Actions and, and, and thinking about shift left, shift left security uh, notions. Um, Snackers, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, Stephen, thanks again. Stephen, we should get you back on. Thank you for oh, your yeah. time. For sure. Thank you, for sure. Everyone. Appreciate it. <laughs>